shopping and me, they don't get along very well. I end up in shops and sometimes I buy loads of stuff I think I need. When in reality, I probably only need one item. In the end, I end up having to give away some of these items. And uh, my wife thinks it's hilarious, especially when she sees me shopping. Now, welcome to Busternet. My name is Daljit. And what does this have to do with Game Changer? You're about to find out. Here we are. We've got a safe. Um, it's West Bromwich Albion. The manager's name is Marco. He's done a pretty good job with the club. Um, Skybet Championship first place. Managed to get them promoted uh, the next season. Finished fifth and then first and then fifth. So he's been rocking about, right? And uh, I looked at this club and I went, hmm, they definitely can do quite well. Looking at the, some of the results they pulled off last season, they've had some losses to United. They haven't really changed the system of play. Playing a 4-1-4-1 throughout the season. They had a bad spell towards the end. They won the Europa Cup, beating Milan in the final. Pretty impressive. A 3-2 win over Milan. Uh, shots at goal. I tend to do this in all my games just to see how a team plays. This was Milan's performance against them. <laughs> right. Milan, it, this actually is a problem. You might, you might laugh at this, right? They had two shots, three shots, right? Three shots. The scoreline is 3-2. West Brom, for all the shots that he had inside the box, Milan took them. It was actually a tough game. Um, for all the chances that he created, Milan had two clear-cut chances. They had none. Um, and if we were to look at some of these goals and try to identify what, you know, what we can do to make things a bit more um, easier for us we're going to play this game. Here you go. Arthur scoring from outside the box. Typical 4-1-2-3 goal. Then Caceres, Arthur, Rafinha from outside the box. Bends it top corner. Scores their second goal. And then we look at this run from the middle. Right? Second one, run, far post, slots it home. These are two very good chances created through a transition failure. Right? Now, this is something that we need to bear in mind, especially when it comes to the shape of your tactic. The shape that is indicated on the tactical screen is just a guide, but it gives you a rough idea of how you might end up playing. So you, the moment you start playing with different kinds of roles, it kind, kind of makes things a bit more challenging. But let's take a look at a few more games first. And then we're looking at other matches. I'll pick another match. This, this, sorry, against Liverpool, complete domination. Liverpool totally dominated. You, you, you couldn't answer um, Liverpool. And this is the other thing about the 4-1-4-1. Uh, something that some people may not understand. Okay, this is a 4-2-3-1 versus a 4-1-2-3. You got 1-2-3 players. If they get isolated, you've lost possession. You won't be able to control the match. Then you, then most people, what most people end up trying to do is trying to push these guys up the pitch or try to close down more. Now, if you start closing down more, you get a split, which is very like can happen. It takes all it takes is a good team to intercept, and then you end up with decent possession in your half, but you can't build anything from midfield. So let's look at the action zones. Right. These are the action zones for Liverpool. Liverpool didn't control midfield. You controlled midfield. But Liverpool was able to spend more time in your half attacking you. This is 14%. This is a heavy number. If you were able to control midfield, it means that the second ball, that there's a lot of transition failures happening in this match, which allows the opposition to actually turn things around and, and hit you on the break. Um, you will see a lot of this happening with whenever I play like the 442 on Twitch. Or uh, you'll see it with my Hanover save as well, where I generate low possession numbers like 36, 40 percent, but I actually get more shots on goal because I'm banking on the AI transition failures in midfield so that I can hit them. Every time they try to build an attack, they they break down in my third and then I counter attack them. They come inside the half. They're literally camped. They got, they got enough options to spread the ball out. Look at how your players are closing now. There's lots of passing options for the team that's pressing you. They can easily keep the ball moving around the pitch because something is wrong 
with the way you set up your defense or you can't win the second ball with the split block and the middle press then you're going to have issues because your team is going to be so split you'll be chasing around chasing shadows and you're just going to end up gifting the opposition a chance to shoot at you or actually start building play in your third uh, they got another attack again this is not good because it just keeps showing highlight after highlight after highlight after highlight is them attacking you so something has to be done because you had midfield you had control in midfield but uh, your attacks fail here this is a transition failure look at how disorganized your team is right now this is bad because this is extreme got a lot of support duties going but your players are not keeping the ball so here what could have caused this to happen so this at this point in time you track it all. Pino Monte gets the ball, plays it at Ndombele. Here at this moment, my thing is he's running at the defense, but he may not be good enough. Your inverted wing back has come inside. Your inverted wing back is on support and he's already overcommitted. So this whole thing opens up Keita. Keita, all he has to do is this guy drops into a defensive position. All Keita needs to do is drop the ball here and you're in trouble. What I found, um, and I'm going to skip the whole training bit because training is pretty straightforward. I mean, if you've watched my videos, you probably understand that you want to have individual focus for your players. You want to do match preparation before big games. That's all basic stuff. This is where things got interesting when I started looking at safe. You've got a maximum of 17 foreign players. You've got more than 17 foreign players in your squad, which is fine if you can find a way not to play them. But if you look at your entire squad, the majority of your players are safe for him, players. So you, you, you end up in a situation where I actually had this question. I went, I went, you know, let's clear the selection. We auto-select. If you auto-select, you got to leave out players like Marcos Lorente. You got to leave uh, Lucas, Lucas Ramos as well. I mean, honestly, I would leave Lucas Ramos out. But now you've got all these players that are, some of them are very talented, like Samuel Autry, right? This boy has got so much potential that to leave him on the sidelines is going to it's such a waste because he is so good at this age that he should be playing first team football so and he's going to be huge for your team going forward but if you loan him now he's got to you got to loan him to a team a you got to loan him to a club that's got very good training facilities and he's playing at the top of his game so you got to be looking at top sides to loan him to and you need them to play him so what what are we gonna do? So here, this for this player, if you can't use him, it's a big issue. The biggest challenge with this save is actually to get more domestic players into the team, so that you can you can get around the foreign, you can develop a team for the long haul. Now what you end up having to do is you have to go through your club and be very. You got to divorce emotion now from your from your decision making. So. When I look at this team now, I've got to decide Francesco Canino is not a bad player, but Autre is a better player. So when I look at this player, they're both good actually. <laughs> this that is the situation. They're both good players. But if I want if now I'm forced into a situ situation where I've got to loan him out, I can't use him, right? So you gotta loan this guy out. Then we got Paolo Amaruso, very good defender on the left. He's gonna be playing in every single game. Milenko Savic has to be loaned out. He can't, he can't fit into the team, which is a pity. So he's got to go to a top side. Then we got Harold Cardona. I looked at him, defender central, loan him out. He's a wonder kid, fickle personality. He should have been mentored. Right, we, we got to get rid of his personality. So you, you got to put him into a, into a group. At least one team leader, one significant, uh, one influential player who's got an average influence and one team leader who's got significant influence and you got to put him into that and you know hope that he is mentored but now it's too late because you've got to come up with a squad of players to be registered for the premier league and harold cardona if you mentor him you got to keep him in the club you can't do that so now you got to loan him out uh I mean, savage is out of here <laughs> uh i wanted to actually kept this guy federico cauteruccio because if there's anybody who's going to cauterize defenses this will be the man because of his name, right? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Okay. Oh, man. I should stop with this stuff. Okay. Jump period 16. Anticipation 16. Positioning 17. Tackling 16. All he's got to do is work on 
passing. Why? Because it works on technique. Ball playing defender works on technique too. So both of them will double up his technique development. So what do you do is you go to this player, go to his training and development, look at this, no thank you. Tell the ass man you're taking over for a while. Put him on defender, yeah, take control of all individual training. See, technique just went up. Okay, now let's double up on technique, right? <laughs> Bang. Technique, passing first touch. Voila. These guys, this guy is going to improve very quickly over the long run, right? So his training rating is 7.5. And this is why you take over training, right? This is the reason why I do it. Because if you give it to the ass man, there's no praise criticized. I'll tell you why this is important. Every time a player's training rating drops to 6, or maybe sub-7, criticize him, they get a short boost. This is important. It's like you kick up the ass. Your, your, if your assistant manager isn't kicking them, you got to do the kicking, right? So, uh, Federico Cotturucio has got to play, man. With a name like that, your defense will be solid. <laughs> okay, right. Cotturizes defenses. Seriously, he'll stop. Any bleeding, I, I, I have this feeling that he will, I bleed him, he, he does quite well. Homegrown at club, homegrown at nation are going to be two very valuable um, types of players. He's got tackling 16, positioning 14, work rate 17. Okay, so his agility and his balance is so-so, right? But his anticipation is 15, his decision-making is 14, his determination is 18. This player should be sent on the first boat to China. So let him go. I mean, seriously, Lucas Ramos may be good on paper. Some I know there are some guys out there who love Lucas Ramos. I don't. Because in my book, low bravery for a midfielder in center is thank you for all the fish, but you're out of here. Okay? Plus, he has no flair. This guy is just a, just a midfielder. He's just... He's not going to see the unexpected. This guy was like a black hole. He was like, he had the gravity of a black hole. Right? Every time the attacks came, he's there. He sucked up all the attacks, right? He anticipated the attacks. He broke attacks up. I was like, this guy is good. I mean, play him. Don't loan him. Don't do anything like loan. This loan, no, 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 no. Don't list him for loan. Play him, please. You see, this is the thing about players when they're young. Between the ages of 19 and 24, or 23 around there, you can get 50 attribute point gains from them within two seasons. Right? These guys will explode. So that is what you want. You want to play them, get them developed, so that they become a long... Because 19, 20, 21, he's going to get HGN as well. So, and this guy will become... A, this guy will be one of your players that you're going to depend on in the long run. If you don't want him, just send him over to my club, right? We will use him. <laughs> He's that good. We let them go. So some are still waiting. We actually sold her. I mean, United came, 42 million. I was not going to say no to them. I said, take him, go, 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 please go. Because I would never use him. So we got 42 million for him. Uh, then loan fee for Guler Marana, and then Lucas Ramos went to Locomotive Moscow. Sorry, he didn't go to Juventus. He went to Locomotive Moscow. I think Guler Marana went end up going to Juventus with a loan fee of two hundred thousand per month. <laughs> That's good business, man. You, you're gonna have to make a decision on which players you're gonna let go. Essentially, that is the biggest thing about the safe. As far as your tactics are concerned, so you basically have three tactics. And I suspected that the one that you turned to the most was this tactic, the inverted wing back, the, the matches that I saw where you had a few transition failures generally stem from, I, I think it stemmed from this tactic. First up, let's, let's break everything down. First, you're playing what I like to call a very fluid shape. Now, does this matter? Not really, but we need to understand how this affects your team when they move up and down the pitch, right? You've got a lot of players on support duty. They're all going to move as a compact unit. Once you lose the ball in transition, there'll be a disorganized mess when they come back, which is exactly what happened in some of your matches. Secondly, we've got inverted wingbacks. Inverted wingbacks tend to be in the middle of the pitch in the final third when you're attacking, especially if they're on support. If they have to get further forward player trade, it's worse. They're further away. And if you lose the ball in transit, you only got two central defenders left. Those two central defenders are going to look at the manager and curse him because they're going to say, we've got a lot of work to do thanks to you. So now, what do you do? So this is a challenge for anybody who's playing the system. Right? It's my system, so I should know it quite well. 
The first thing you want to do is stop playing on very attacking mentality. The second thing you want to do is behind the Mazala, which is the biggest weakness area of the tactic, you want to ask yourself, do you want to play on support or do you want to play on defense? Which is the reason why I played on defense duty most of the time. Nearly all the time I play on defense duty, especially against good sides. But that kind of reduces the efficiency of the, the effectiveness of the tactic. So if you, you recall in other saves with Steady Bridge, this guy is actually an anchor man. This guy is actually a Trakotista because I make it a bit less fluid. I put a few more duties around the pitch to stretch the team out so that I have more players staying back. I might even change the duties of some of these players. And at times I even change the roles because I don't want two players stucking in sometimes. So this is something that is of concern. Now the second thing is this. When you play with a split block, there's a goal in playing the split block, right? which is when you ask the front group to close down and mark tight. You absolutely have to be able to press the opposition. You have to be in the opponent's half, meaning you're controlling the game and that's why you're playing it like this. So that every time the opponent tries to clear the ball, you pick it up. If you're not picking it up, then this is not the strategy you want. Because what if, if you end up in matches where you don't, you aren't doing anything with the ball from midfield. So you're not building play up into the opponent's half and staying there. Then what's going to happen is your players in front are going to press. Your players in midfield are going to be, pu be pulled forward. You're going to have a large gap opening up. And when that gap opens up, you're vulnerable to over-the-top balls, which is what we saw in some of your games. So the, the thing here is the mentality was different. So if I wanted to start, if I wanted to play something akin to like playing liquid with that kind of movement that we get in tactics, the first thing I'll do is I'll remove close down more tackle harder. I'll probably not play with a split block. This, and the other thing is I'll definitely remove prevention or group distribution because it's, it's also dangerous against good sides. So if I, if I wanted to look at this, I'll probably against good sides, I'll probably go defend duty for a start, and turn this guy into a defend duty as well. So this becomes, this makes the tactic a lot more stable. Because now I'm telling this guy to stay back. I'm telling this guy to stay back. So he's gonna, they're going to anchor the midfield. So in case we don't do something with the ball, they will drop back. Here, we got dribble more on Ndombele. And Ndombele was losing the ball. His dribbling is only 14. So he's not that fantastic with dribbling the ball. And he tends to turn around and look for the pass rather than score, which is uh, not something I want in this position because actually I want this player to look to try and score because we want him to come into the gap that's going to open up because large gaps are going to open up on either side of the defense. So, so between the fullback and the central defender, there will be a gap. This is why this, the tactic is set up this way. So you, you, you may want to, like if he, he's playing, probably I wouldn't dribble more. Then with this guy, we're playing roaming, uh, more direct passes. He's got passing of 17. He, he can play more direct. Um, but both of these players, they like to tiki-taka the ball. They like to tick-tock the ball between themselves instead of, you know, trying to split defenses open. But he's got killer balls as well. So there's, these are inclinations more than anything else. So the, this will be a starting point. I would just tweak the tactics slightly. But I would look at removing, closing down more on these players if... If things are not working for me, right? So, like, if you're playing against a team like Manchester City and you see uh, Liverpool, the way they were playing, I would have gone inverted wing back, defend duty on those two players first and just watch the game. Now, if I still couldn't control the match, right, I definitely wouldn't have been playing on very attacking. I would have gone on positive. I would have gone on a lower mentality because I, want to, I don't want my players running around, like, um, running around losing the ball. And I would have removed run at defence if it was not working. Because right defense assumes that it's, it's working for your team. But if it's not working for your team, don't use it. Now, here we also have pass it shorter for a reason. Because we want the ball to be tra uh, traversed through these guys before it makes, makes its way up to the final third. Now, I'm not going to do very much changes to this, but this is something that we needed to understand. Okay, so here we've got another tactic. Um, it's, it's okay, um, but again... I tend to hate prevention of goalkeeper distribution, right? You always give your goalkeeper a bit more. Of a, okay, now if you're playing a sweeper keep on support and you're telling him to do all this, you're kind of limiting what he's able to do. If you're under the press, 
do all this. Remove it. Give the keeper a bit more freedom. Always do that. I, I strongly believe in doing that, right? If you want to play a sweeper keeper, and if he's good at playing a sweeper keeper, which he is, right? Give him the latitude to make a decision. Now, if you want him to play as a safe sweeper keeper, then to go on defend duty. That's all you got to do. And uh, here, wing back on attack. Wing back is going. They're going to punch forward. This guy is going to support play. This guy is going to try and do the overlap. But he's operating behind a Mazala. So you've got to be very careful when you use this kind of players. So it's, this guy has got to be the fastest player in your team. This guy's going to drop. This guy's going to attack this space. It's generally an okay tactic. right? Um, it's still reasonably decent. But we made certain interesting changes to the tactics. And we played it slightly differently. So when I went into the game, um, I had a big challenge ahead of, for me. Because firstly, the season has ended. <laughs> So I told myself when I took over the safe, I'm not going to sign any players. I'm going to loan out whoever I think shouldn't be playing for us. I want to have a core group of players and we're going to play three different systems because your team is actually quite versatile. It's just understanding why, what you have to look for in your games. You just have to learn how to control matches a bit more and that should be fine. So it's a question of which three, I came up with three tactics in the end. Uh, these are all the preseason friendlies that your team played. First game of the season, we won this 2 0, and we played the liquid system, right? The one, but we did it with a slightly different twist, right? I'll explain the tactic very soon. So, our first goal, uh, Lorente, Amoruso, we're looking to have a bit more control with the attack. We're using Lorente here, Arthur played the ball. Then uh, we go to Endomble, Endomble leads the attack, Vargas now, I mean, what the wing back coming in here? Prina Monte, Vargas. Now, I'm not using an F9. He's just a DLF on support. Right? So, he comes around after scores. We take, we score the goal here. Then, the second goal was a, a mistake by them. Right? Lorente played it out to Pina Monte. Pina Monte leads the attack. Plays it to Vargas. Look at Amaruso making the run. That's your inverted wing back. Crossing the ball. And then Pina Monte comes in. And then they make a mistake. He just goes in to score the second goal. So, Southampton, con this Southampton had no shots for about 70 minutes of the entire game. Uh, we can totally control this match from start to end, which is something that I think you can do easily. So this is the spread that we had. Our second match was against Man City in the Super Cup. Here, we took the liquid system again. Uh, we played on a positive mentality with, the, you know, with what I suggested, which is I remove all the closing down instructions on the players. Uh, we did. We, we played quite well. We spent 5% of the time attacking them. They spent 5% of the time attacking. It's a pretty even game. Nobody was attacking each other. I mean, this City is a good team, right? So, um, we didn't allow them to have too much time in our half. They had the ball in uh, our third. They had more of the ball in midfield, but we were able to hit them on the break. So, the idea here is you are the one that wants to break and hit the other teams in the transition. Newcastle... 3-2. This time we use a different 4-1-2-3. I've got two 4 one 2 threes for you. So here we, we played with Jamie Gibbons up top. We, this, was a, this was a rotated squad. This basically, I think, was um, more or less some of your second players. And we ended up actually, uh, oddly enough, with uh, 10 men with, in the last couple of minutes of the game. But I didn't change the tactic at all. Right? So we lost the player. And I think they, they had a goal disallowed right at the end. So this is your defender. So this is a slightly different way we, where we are a bit more stretched. Look at what your fullback is doing. So we've got a fullback down the left leg. He's not playing as an inverted wing back. See what he's, we 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 have options to stretch the defense. This is Dale. This is the great black hole of your team. And attacks just simply vanish around him. Gibbons played the ball out to Novotny. Novotny crosses the ball to your fullback. Your fullback plays it back into the box and you score a goal past the hapless Rick Astley. Oops, sorry, his name is um, Olsen. Anybody who thinks, yes, this is because of my Twitch stream. Then against Brentford, uh, we played the 4 1 4 1. I think Pinamonte scored again. This time, uh, here, action zones will show you. West Brom was spending a, sh a lot of time in their half, right? Uh, same tactic, except this time I played with a. I, I extended the line of engagement because now I, I use the second tactic and I ex extended the line engagement into their half. So I didn't use liquid now. I use a more flexible tactic and I spent more time in their half. So I, did, I didn't any do major changes to the tactic. 
and our, our that's our, our analysis, our shots. This is our spread in their half, and this is Brentford. And so we created a lot of decent chances inside their half. And then against Middlesbrough, now we changed uh, to a f different. Uh, we went back to the liquid system just to see uh, if we could lick, you know, use liquid against another team. Uh, again here, the action zones will show you the West Brom spent 9% of the time. They hardly ever attacked us. We, we were camping. When you want to use liquid, you're looking to camp successfully. So you have to have action zones that show you you're camping. This is us camping. I think Galileo, which is another 235 that I have, is even more aggressive. It's got like a bigger spreads in op opposition halves. Because we don't, we ne hardly let the opposition in. So this was uh, Middlesbrough. This is chances. This is what you were doing. All inside the box. And notice the number. Top Pinamonte. For our next game, we play against Chelsea. And I wanted to do something interesting. So I wanted to play with Galileo. Because I believe your team can play Galileo. But it's going to be a real test. Because Galileo is a tactic that's split up. It's a 5-5, five -five, right? Uh, it's a very unfair tactic. Because it literally plays 5-5. Five and five. Five in attack and five in defense. Now, it means that if you, you could end up with games where it's a 3 2 scoreline, 4 3 scoreline, because you're going to score as many as you concede sometimes. So the matches can swing. But this was one game where Chelsea and uh, uh, West Brom played out. We had quite a number of shots inside their box. <laughs> this is Chelsea and this is West Brom. This is where it's wrong. Oh, both teams had a lot of chances inside the ball. So it became a question of which team was going to outscore the other. And I kind of like games like this as well. So you can actually play like this too if you wanted. So it's, the thing is, you have the players in your team. Aaron's, uh, I think this, we actually uh, conceded first from a silly mistake like this. And then it was them, they couldn't, you see this is interesting, right? Because they can't clear the ball and we score. So... Then we cross the ball. They can't clear the ball again. This is why I like Galileo. And after, you know, I mean, it happens in the game. What are we supposed to do? Long shots. And then we had a corner. And Novotny scored. So 3-1. So, how do I see a team playing? Okay, so if I were to play this system, which is the liquid system, I would play a D DM on defense. Probably an inverted wingback on defense or inverted wingback on support, right? Winger, we thought all these are PIs, DLF on support. That's how it start. Pressing forward on support, DLF on support. F9, maybe not. Not for Pinamonte. Right. Uh, he's not bad, but he can play. I, I'd rather him get into the box and score goals. So F9, he won't score so many. But as a pressing forward or a DLF, he might, right? So he might get more goals in that position. So uh, I'll play him in that, in that role. So we got a uh, slightly shorter... Uh, slightly low tempo, right defense. You can you can actually uncheck this counter counter press, high defensive line, and um, standard defensive. Risk. So this is the first tactic I use. Generally, I'll start on positive, go attacking if I need to. The second tactic. This is slightly different. Um, I I it's not it's not custom again press, but it's slightly different. So here. This role is going to be pretty interesting. You can play a pressing forward on attack. You can play a DLF on attack. You can even play a target man on attack. Target man on attack, last choice. But DLF on attack and pressing forward will be my first two choices. This, uh, this tactic is all about getting him up the pitch, dropping across. Free. So he gets lots of time on the ball. Now, we also use a playmaker. This is one of the very few tactics I have a playmaker at the back. Because... What we want to do is we want to draw teams in and hit them over the top. Now, it's not going to... It's against teams like Liverpool, United. If you see a 4-2-3-1 coming up against you, you probably don't want to use this because then you are inviting and soaking a team that is able to bring their fullbacks into play, which is going to, which is going to overpower your four defenders. So I tend to use this against other teams like the West Broms. I'm uh, sorry, the, uh, the Middlesbrough, the Southamptons, I, I will use this tactic in a heartbeat. So he's got shorter, higher tempo, hit early crosses, overlap on the left to get this guy even further up the pitch. A Mazala, with, these are all the player traits. There's no play. If you notice, there are no PIs on any of these players. Yeah, so we've got no PIs on anyone. 
distribute. Okay, you can actually do this, or you can play like that, right? So it's entirely up to you. But this gives 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 you some security against the high press. So if you you find teams that play, giving you the high press, then yeah, do this. This is actually a safer way to play it. Then stand line line engage on high defensive line. I guess some teams that were just defensive and I wanted to go at them. I just went and just increased the high line engage. So I told my team to play in the half. So for example, somebody attacks me, and I and I see them in my half a lot. What I will do is I'll tell my players, guys, stop what you're doing. Start attacking them high up the pitch. That's all. That's what this does. This tells my fullbacks how far up the pitch they're supposed to go. So if I find that my fullbacks are supporting the attacks, it, I don't need extra support from my fullbacks. I just want them to concentrate a bit more on defensive side of the game. I might drop this. Then this splits the whole team up. So there could be situations where, you know, the passers might not find the place, which is the reason why we have a DLP here. And an NCB here. So this gives you options as well when you want to play this snack thing. Now finally, we've got Galileo. Galileo is my the love of my life. 235 or 415. I don't know what you know call this. But this is a 5-5 five, five tactic. Five at the back, five in front. It's got all this this got a lot of players. It's got this actually needs the close down more, tackle harder, mark titan, all this group. Because we want to play it that way. We want to continually put the back line under pressure and force them into clearing the ball. When they clear the ball, it'll come to these players. These three. So these players have to, you know, if you don't see them making a lot of interceptions, something is wrong. Then, uh, which means that you're probably better off not playing this if you can't do it. But your team can actually play this quite well. So uh, this is the player that is going to have. Uh, basically, I'm playing this guy like a very. He roams from positions, dribbles more. Tech. He's like one crazy playmaker, right? I didn't want a playmaker who stops play. But I wanted a player that could roam around and it's pretty hard to isolate him from... Um, from and the Defenders are going to find him very hard to mark. So he's going to be all over the place. So you need a player with good decisions and good off the ball for this position. And you have those players. You've got pass into space, overlap, overlap, and then slightly more direct tempo, run at defense, uh, hit early crosses, counter press, use of side trap. This instruction... It's very helpful against teams because if you use this, chances are if you're good enough, you're going to force opposition into mistakes and chances are they probably will get players sent off. Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a bully system. So we did okay. So on, on the whole, I thought we got off to a pretty decent start. Four wins on the trot, seize your team, top of the table and uh, comfortable at the moment. So if I were you, I think from, a, from my perspective, it depends on exa exactly how you are. You want a safe option? Go with this. You want to have some fun against defensive teams? Go with this. If you just want to have lots of movement and you, you're willing to try things out, this is also a version. So all, your team can play a lot of tactics. The question is, who are the foreign players that you want to keep? Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you want to keep up to date with more shows like this, hit the notifications bell, subscribe to the channel, post a like. If you don't like it, just post a dislike. doesn't really matter. At least tell me why and I'll try and do a better show next time. And once again, thanks for all the support, you guys. You guys have a good one. I'll catch up with you soon. You guys take care. Bye-bye.